and watch your story. So my story starts um, with an amazing family and parents who brought me up in the church and really emphasized the importance of having faith in God and being connected to a church and that they can help you with your faith. When I was 10 years old, I decided that I wanted to show everyone that I accepted that God died for me and that I want to follow Jesus. So while I understood the gravity of this and I was baptized and I said all of those things to the church, I kind of just lived off my parents' faith and didn't really take responsibility for my relationship with God. And that reflected as I went into middle school and I would look at other girls and think, am I as pretty as them? Am I as popular as this person? So I would compare myself to others and um, sometimes I would think, wow, I'm a lot better than that person. So I was caught up in the sin of being envious or prideful. Um, and so I had really low self-esteem because of this. Uh, I didn't really like who I was as a person. So between my seventh and eighth grade year, I went to Super Summer. And this was like a monumental summer for my life. It was a turning point in my faith. and. I decided that I wanted to take initiative in my relationship with God. I wanted to take my faith to the next level. When I went home, everything about my life got better. I, my relationship with my friends improved. My uh, relationship with my family got better. The way I saw the world was completely different, a new perspective. Over the past two years, I've started getting this idea of how we can have a relationship with God. There's many different ways to describe a human to a God relationship, and this can just be one of the various ones. Slaves submit to their masters and they obey them. So we can look at that, and there's biblical evidence found throughout the Bible, but um, I specifically found Ephesians and Romans helpful. It says that, that God's will is perfect and holy, and we see this said throughout the whole Bible, and that when we follow His will, when we obey His will like a slave obeys a master, it works out and it's righteous. But if you're a slave to anything else, like a slave to envy, to pride, a slave to, and insert your sin here, then you're not a slave to God, you're a slave to sin. So look at your life and Think about what you spend most of your energy on, and if it's not God, then it's sinful, it's toxic to your life. And I realized that, and so for about two years, I've been thinking about how I can live being a slave to God. Um, so that said, I really encourage you to break from this bondage of being a slave to sin and accept the ironic freedom that comes with being a slave to God. Next year, as I go to college at Baylor, pledging to myself right now, and now to all of you, that I'm going to continue living as a slave to God and obey Him. Um, and we will see what fantastic things He has in store to add to my testimony. Thanks. <laughs> Awesome. So when you start talking about uh, Super Summer and going to camp in middle school, right, and you uh, go and you said you came back and all your relationships changed, your relationship with your family, your relationship with your friends, which I think most of us want those relationships to look great and probably better than they do. Um, so what do you think in you, what, what part of following Jesus changed some of your actions that those relationships started to look better? What is it that you think that really changed there? Um, I started building my relationships around God more. Like, um, I would talk more with my parents about God, and uh, my friends and I started a Bible study when I came back from camp, and so our whole friend group built around God, and it just made, like, our views were the same on things, and um, we understood, like, from a biblical perspective of how to treat each other. So I think that helped. Awesome. That's great. You can go ahead and go have a seat, Anna. Y'all give her a round of applause real quick. Again. I'll take your mic. Where's, where's my boy Hunter at? <laughs> Man, everybody's real excited to see it. Movie Mondays. 
Hunter, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, man? My name's Hunter Gassaway. I'm a sophomore at Marble Falls High School. Uh, I do this thing called Movie Mondays where I review movies. Uh, subscribe on Instagram, at movie, double underscore Mondays. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah. Hey, all right, real quick. Do you mind taking your shoes off and yeah, showing yeah, us how yeah. much you so, love Movie Mondays, man? So the back of my shoes uh, rep the brand Movie, movie Mondays. So That's beautiful. Yeah. You I can find it. me anywhere. So. Yeah. Uh, my movie watching experience has changed thanks to you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Why don't we go ahead and uh, let's watch Hunter's story. To go back to the beginning, I always grew up in church. I can't remember a time when I didn't go to church. I can remember from when I was a little kid going to church and Sunday school and church parties and coloring while the preacher gave the sermon because I was a little kid with no attention span who needed something to do. And that was always something that was there in my life. It was always a presence. But I was never forced, which was a cool thing. My parents never required me to go to church. I think not being forced set me apart on this different path than a lot of other people. It made me have this passion to pursue Christ that a lot of other kids my age at that time I think didn't have because they were being forced to go to church. And so when I was about six years old, I decided to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then I got baptized and I, I thought I knew what that meant, but I would later find out I didn't know what that meant. I have never not believed in God as far as believing that he lived and died for our sins. Just later I would discover truly his love for us and what our purpose is on this world to work for him and do good for him. So life went on like that through all of my elementary school years and uh, intermediate school, which was uh, fifth and sixth grade. And I would call myself a Christian if anybody asked. I would go to church. I participated in Bible drill and Sunday school and all those fun things. But I wasn't truly living as a great Christian until the summer after my sixth grade year when I was old enough to go to youth and I got to go to Sunday's camp in Cedar Park, Texas. It was a blast. I was having a great week at camp. We had a great speaker who was delivering some great messages and it was kind of got me thinking about Christ in a way that I had never thought about before. He said things that I had never heard before and I was like, wow, Jesus can really do that for us. He, he did that for us. And it kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things. And then came Thursday night. Thursday night at our campus salvation night. So every year on the Thursday of camp, the sermon is all about salvation and how you can be saved through Jesus. In seventh grade year, I'm sitting there and the speaker says, now if you feel called to accept God in your life, please stand up. And at this point, everybody has their eyes closed so nobody can see you because you just had a little bit of time for prayer. And I stood up and I remember opening my eyes and seeing I was in the back and seeing one, two other people that had stood up. And then after I stood up, I saw a couple more people standing up. It was a big moment in my life because at that moment, I finally truly felt what it was like to be able to follow God and to feel his calling on your life and the real passion like for what you should be doing in life to follow him. And from that moment on, it forever changed my perspective on life. I immediately stopped caring what other people thought of me because I knew that I was a follower of God and that was the most important thing. And I knew God would accept me for who I am, which shocked me because I had always thought in elementary school that how you got friends was to be cool. And I just never done that. I had never played sports. I had never been in the popular crowd. But then once I started acting like myself, I was able to make amazing friends that I still have to this day. I'd always kind of thought of myself as a leader, but I never put myself in the position to be a leader. Until this year, I've kind of taken a lot of responsibilities to try to be a leader because I feel like I'm in a position now where I'm strong enough in my faith that my goal is to try to bring other people to the faith. The more we grow our fellowship, the more believers there are in the world, the better 
things are gonna be. I feel like with my personality, I very much could have fallen into a bad crowd. Instead of following down one of those paths through my faith, I think it's helped me live the better path to be able to take this big personality that I have and instead of going and getting blackout drunk at parties, I'm able to go and scream songs for Jesus on Mondays and Wednesdays at Young Life and Youth Group, which is a better path. And now as a sophomore at Marble Falls, here now, I feel as strong in my faith as I ever have. I feel the strongest. I feel this burning passion inside me to just spread the word of God to anybody that will listen. And I feel proud to be able to share the word. I care about spreading the word of God to everybody in this community. That's what I feel a real passion for. That's what I feel this leadership calling me to do, to go out and spread the word to anyone who will listen to me. And that's what I'm very passionate about. Thank you so much for listening. Awesome, man. So, a lot of people can probably resonate with where you're coming from as you're talking about uh, this journey with the Lord, that you maybe have this experience when you were really young um, where you, you made this decision that, that maybe you didn't quite understand, um, but you, you know, went full force into this thing, but then you have this other moment later um, that you say, man, this might have been when I really started walking with Jesus. And we, we kind of talked about that, but what I really want to talk about is what is it that changed in your everyday living of just how you saw people and the things that you did um, from that moment at camp where you stood up and you would say, man, that's, even though all this stuff happened here, I think that I accepted Christ here and it changed the total projection of my life. So what does that look like? What does that change look like in your everyday? Well, a lot of it has to do with just like how I carried myself and like I'm generally a pretty happy person most of the time. Um, and so a lot of that before had been this sort of fake shroud of happiness that I would put on to like impress people or like put on this certain image for myself. And then after that, I was able to find out what like true joy was in that moment and then be able to live a much happier life. Uh, from that point on, I think just like the way I talked to people, I would generally come at it from a perspective of a Christian versus before it. I was just like anybody else. So what is that perspective of, of how do you view people now as a Christian? What is your view of them that you say, man, this changes the way that I would have approached you before? I, I think before I, I became a Christian that I just saw other people as like, oh yeah, they're, they're like me, but everybody's like themselves. I, I don't really care. Versus afterwards, I think a lot of what you discover is that Everyone is feeling the same emotions you are as all times. Everybody has emotions, uh, surprisingly. And that I care about that and what other people are feeling. And I was able to empathize more afterwards. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, come on up, Gracie. Gracie Tinsley. The woman, the myth, the legend. Gracie, why don't you introduce yourself? Because we get to see you sing every single week. Yeah. Um, I'm Gracie, if you didn't know. And um, I'm a senior at Marble Falls High School. I'm going to Texas A&M next Woo! year. And Bunch of haters. Calvin. Calvin went to West Texas something or another. There's a big fan of out there. Continue, Gracie. <laughs> um, basically, I just keep myself busy between like church, school, and work. And church, school, and work. Yeah. The holy trinity of life things. <laughs> Student council, NHS. There you go. There. Yeah. yeah and the those, list. Those things. Awesome, Gracie. Why don't we watch your story? I was born in Longview, Texas as the youngest of three girls. My parents were going to East Texas Baptist University at the time. 
And a little while later, my dad graduated and wanted to become a pastor. So we moved to a suburb of San Antonio, and my dad became the recreational pastor at this church called First Baptist Universal City. It was a really great time in my life. We had so many people around us who cared for us and who loved us. This church was also my school, so we were very well known. And we honestly looked like a pretty perfect family. We had the suburban life with a cookie cutter house and three girls, but nobody really knew what was going on at home. My dad struggled with very severe anger issues. He would just destroy things, whether it be phones or remotes or anything he could get his hands on at that moment that he got angry. This lifestyle really confused me and my faith with God. My dad was here and he was supposed to be this spiritual leader, this guidance counselor, and instead he was tearing us apart. And I couldn't understand how God could be in such a person. Eventually, his anger led to my parents' divorce. My dad had to resign from his position as recreational pastor and the church really didn't know what was going on, so they blamed my mom. We no longer felt a warm welcome, so we just stopped going. So for about five years post-separation, I walked completely lost in my faith. I was going through middle school. I was struggling with the illusion of popularity and self-worth. I had to have a needed protective order against my dad, and my mom was just struggling to keep us afloat. So it was a really difficult time in my life where I just did not have a strong relationship with God. Due to financial issues, we had to move to Marble Falls and my dad had to stay in San Antonio. To be honest, I really hated it here. <laughs> I didn't understand why God would take me away from all of my friends and my family and my home into this place that I did not know. And I constantly asked him why, why would he do this to me? And finally, in the summer before eighth grade, he answered, you're here to start something. And I thought, what, what is he talking about? And I didn't know the next step to take or what to do, but I had an answer. So eighth grade starts and I started checking out First Baptist Marble Falls because I felt God pulling me back to the faith and I just had to let him in. I also happened to have the same exact schedule as this girl named Anna. So the year goes on and God's just wrestling with me like, you're here to start something. And I say, okay, okay. So I go to my youth pastor, Ryan, and I tell him, I wanna start a Bible study. And he said, well, do you know this girl named Anna? Because I think y'all would do great together. And I said, yes, of course I know Anna. <laughs> um, we have the same exact schedule. And so me and Anna went on to lead that Bible study for two years and created really great memories and friends along with it. Looking back, I realized it was all a part of God's plan. The divorce, the move, even down to having the same schedule as my now best friend. Because without all of that, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish everything I have today or have the friends and memories that I have today or as strong of a relationship with the Lord. And so I'm thankful for everything that has happened to me. And if I've learned anything from everything I've gone through is that don't run from God because He's never gonna stop chasing you and he'll always pull you back into the faith. Oh man, uh, Gracie, I, I really, I, I love your story. Um, and I love it, we just finished, for those of you that have been here, we just finished four weeks talking about family dynamics and um, what our families look like and how they look different and how some of our families don't look the way that we wish that they did. Um, and this was kind of your first chance to be able to tell that to like 130 of your closest friends. Um, and I love it because you have every reason in the world to hate the church. Uh, and we talked about that in my office. Of, of that's, it makes more sense for you to hate the church than to love it. Uh, but you love this church and this youth ministry um, more than many of us, more, more than almost anybody I've met. <laughs> And you just, you're, you're passionate about being here. You're here all the time and you love what God is doing in our youth ministry. Uh, and I love that. So how do you get from, what do, you, what do you know now that you didn't know then that you would say, man, I do have every reason to hate the church, but I know this about God. And this is why I can love the church. This is why I can love his people. 
So um, this the series that we've been doing, Kindred, really spoke to me. And um, you said, like, there's people in the church that come in to, like, fill those gaps. And what I know now is that I'm meant to be in a community of believers so that I can invest in that community and they can fill the gaps that, you know, my family hasn't and that they haven't led me in. And so um, I'm glad to, you know, be here and be in the church. And I wish I would have known that, like, the community of believers, whether it be in San Antonio or here, could have, like, gotten me through that, like, emotional time. And so I'll know that for the future when I have another emotional time. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Gracie. Laura, you can go ahead and come up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix my cushion as you come up. I'm sliding. I'm a slouchier. Y'all welcome Laura up here. Ugh. All right, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, I'm Laura Hosman, and I'm 16 years old, and I'm a sophomore in Marble Falls High School. All right. And you do all the things. Um... So you're like the normal people who don't do all the things. I mean, I work, I'm at home, and I'm at school. The, the holy trinity of things to do, the applications. Awesome. Laura, let's go ahead and watch your story. Um, my testimony is that God has been a constant in my life. He has always been there, no matter what. And I've been a very blessed person. I've never struggled with being an addicted to drugs or being left or having a family member that died horribly. Never faced any kind of horrible trauma. But I did grow up in a broken home where my parents got divorced when I was three years old. And I started living with my mom. I've always lived with my mom and I saw my dad on the weekends. And I've always had him there financially, but I've never really had him there as a parent. He's never really been there through everything, every life experience, every moment in my life. He's just kind of been there financially, and um, my parents getting divorced just caused a broken bond with my dad, where I didn't feel like I had a dad. I just felt like, oh yeah, like he helped give birth to me. Like it wasn't something where I had a bond with him. It was just kind of like sometimes an obligation to talk to him. But God's always been there and he's shown me that he's my heavenly father and that he's there. Um, I grew up in a Christian household and my mom always led me to Christ. I accepted Christ at a very young age. I've um, seen God's grace for me when He helped me and my mom move across continents and be okay. My mom got married again when I was seven years old, and she got married to a loving man, a man who follows Christ, a man who's very set on His word. Even though I never really had my dad there, he gave me Adrian. He's always been there and he's always been like a dad to me. He's helped me through everything. And that's how God showed his ways, by giving me him. So since my mom and Adrian got married, um, I had to move and I had to leave my family behind and it was hard. I never got to see my little sisters for steps or like be with my family all the time and grow up with them. But God's always there just showing me that it's okay and that I have a family here too and that, that this church is my family. And that no matter what I go through and no matter how hard it is, He's always there, and he's constantly putting amazing people in my life that will be there. And he's just 
God's showing me every day what a perfect, loving Father He is. Awesome. Okay, Laura, as we watch your story and we get to hear your testimony, and again, so many things that so many kids sitting in seats can relate to, um, from just divorced families and um, whether it's short moves or long moves uh, and trying to see God and all that. If there was, if you were to share, get to share your story with someone one-on-one -on -one, and there was just one thing that you wanted them to know about God from your story, if there's one thing that you wanted your story to communicate about God, what would that be? I'd want my story to say that God has a purpose no matter what, no matter what he pu puts you through. It may seem like a horrible thing that you're going through or just a little thing, like a little hurdle. He's always there and he'll never leave. You just have to rely on him. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. Can you just move the chairs? My chairman. Okay, as these guys uh, move chairs, our band is going to come up and close in worship like we do during high school and things like that. Uh, and you guys can go ahead and head up here. Um, but here's why we do things like this. Uh, because and when we sat down and we talked with these students and we got to hear, and I got to kind of hear their stories and, and figure out, I told them um, that the one thing that I wanted was for their story to be told well. Uh, because I believe that their story matters because it's about how God has chosen to interact with them um, and play out in there. And so, and because for a lot of us, the same reason that I share my story with you regularly, for a lot of us, we get their stories. Um, we get their home lives. We get moving. We get being in new places. Um, we get uh, these moments where we feel like God might be calling us to more. We get these moments of comparison, like with Anna and some of the stuff that she fought in middle school. And so, I wanted them to tell those so that way you could find a place in their story and understand who God is. Um, but here's what I want as we worship. A couple things. One, I want us to be able to worship together. Um, we get to worship a God who calls Anna out of comparison and who calls Hunter to great leadership and, and who sits there and redeems the homes of Laura and Gracie and calls them to great things as well, whether it's um, in the church family or in the life of their family. And so that, that God is worth worshiping to me. Um, when, when God redeems homes, when God redeems lives, like that God is worth worshiping, but, but also this. For a lot of us, and even in their own stories, we hear it in them as well, um, we come and we sit in seats and we sit in church and then we leave and we move on um, thinking that we're like good people or good Christians or good church going people and that doesn't really matter um, it doesn't you know some of us go man we, we prayed this prayer a long time ago and so I'm good like my relationship with God is good and, and one of the things that we talked with them about as they shared their story is man we want you to share what it's like to walk with Jesus that every day as you're going into schools, as you're going into your part-time jobs, as you're going into your sports, that you're walking with Jesus, that that's what God came and, and saved us for. That's what a relationship with God looks like. That's what he calls us to. Not just this one-time decision, but to walk with Jesus. And so tonight, as we get to worship, if you've never walked with Jesus, and if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, if you've never made a decision to walk with God, to be in a relationship with him, man, tonight, go talk with one of our many adults in the back who are always here and say, teach me what it's like to walk with Jesus or come find me afterwards or come find me on the side because here's the deal. You could very well one day be sharing your story with just one person or with a lot of people and that story might have something to do with hearing their stories. That there's a God who loves you and wants to redeem you and wants to be in relationship with you. And then for those of you that say, man, I've been walking with Jesus. I've known God for a long time. Think about this, man. What is your story? And it doesn't have to be some crazy event of all this sin and all this baggage and then God freed you from all that. But what is God doing in your life? And if you're not walking close enough with Jesus to not know what he's doing in your life, then you're not walking close enough with Jesus.
If you cannot tell the story of what God has done in your life, then you're not spending enough time with that God. That we can tell the story of the roles that our best friends and our boyfriends and our girlfriends and our parents and our siblings play in our lives, but if we can't tell the role that God plays in our lives, then we've missed it. And so think about that story, because someday someone might ask you, I mean, what is God doing in your life? Why does it matter to you so much that, that you would worship him every Wednesday night, that you would go to hear him teach, that you care to know him at all? And I want you to be able to tell that story because their stories deserve to be told well, but all of your stories deserve to be told well also. So I'm going to pray for us, and as we worship, man, if you don't, if you've never chosen to follow that Jesus, to walk with that Jesus, go talk to an adult, Rusty, the Nails, the Joneses, the Whites, Michael, Sam, Haley, whatever. Go talk with them. Let them pray with you. Let them show you, tell you who Jesus is. But if nothing else, think about what is your story? Because just like their story probably means a great deal to you, it means a great deal to me that they would trust us to share some of that with us, some of them for the first time. Your story means a great deal to somebody else. I'm going to pray for us and let's worship. Father, we thank you for tonight. God, we thank you.